I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. Do you recognize this statement? This is the Apostles' Creed, sometimes titled the Apostolic Creed or the Symbol of the Apostles. It is an early statement of the Christian belief. But even though it's called the Apostles' Creed, it wasn't actually made by the Apostles. It was called this way because it contained a brief summary of their teachings. The word creed came from the Latin word credo, meaning I believe and trust. The Apostles' Creed is therefore a summary of what the church teaches and of what Christians together believe. Now, let's dive deeper and explore the meanings of some of the lines of the Apostles' Creed and some of our own personal opinions about them. The first article is, I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. This is the validation of the existence of God and the fact that the concept of God is split into three different entities which consists of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, or in a single word, the Holy Trinity. As a Christian and a Lasallian student, I think the belief in God is a given. If there are times where I lack faith, I can always look to this article and remember that God exists and the values that He offers are within my doorstep. We must present our belief in God not just in front of other people but within ourselves too. Show that you acknowledge His existence and are willing to participate in His teachings. This, with this acceptance, do we get closer to finding inner peace in life. This article is then followed by, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. It's the testament that the Jesus Christ is the one true Son of God and that we must acknowledge the fact that His divine being gave His all for humanity. Jesus has been the center point of the majority of the religious part of my life. His endeavors has been taught in essentially all the schools and churches I have been to. The fact that he is given the title Son of God and the Savior isn't just anything to scoff at, and I believe so too. Through knowing that Jesus is the Savior, he sets a servant example for many as to how one should live their life and as to how one should see virtue. This doesn't mean one should try to be Jesus, but to follow his teachings and be the best person you can be. The next line is, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. This affirms the human nature of Christ, meaning he had a real, true human mother, and also affirms his divine nature, meaning he had no human father, but by the power of the Holy Spirit was conceived in the womb of the Virgin Mary. He is therefore considered both God and man by Christians, fully divine and fully human. To me, the first part, conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, is the fulfillment of God's promises and preparations that Jesus Christ was given by the power of the Spirit, as predicted by the angel who in Luke 1 verse 35 said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. By being born of the Virgin Mary, it signifies the mixture of the human and divine natures of Jesus. I like to think that the third article humbles us, since Jesus himself was born as a human. By a human, we are more likely to accept him as our savior since he is, quote-unquote, one of us. It also shows us that God's promises are always fulfilled. Let's skip ahead a few lines and move forward to Article 8. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Blessed Trinity. He is God like the Father and the Son. The Holy Spirit is not just some ancient, nebulous being. The Holy Spirit is here to empower, enlighten, and instruct us so that we may live out our faith in the everyday world. To believe in the Holy Spirit means to worship Him as God just like the Father and the Son. It means to believe that the Holy Spirit comes into our hearts so that we as children of God might know our Father in Heaven. Moved by God's Spirit, we can change the face of the earth. The Holy Spirit has been given to us as a gift. Yet few of us choose to use it. Sometimes it is due to lack of knowledge about what the gifts are, and other times it is because we simply forget. The gift of wisdom refers to the special capacity of judging human things according to God, under the light of God. Illuminated by this gift, we are able to peer deeper within the realities that surround us. Just imagine how good things would be if we could see the world how God sees. The next sign is the Holy Catholic Church, the Communion of Saints. This article tells us that the Catholic Church is universal as it gathers all men at all times in all places. It also tells us that we should believe in the three persons of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is mainly because the holiness of the Catholic Church is derived from Christ's holiness. 
Both Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit are the hands of God. God acts both by the Son and the Holy Spirit. These three distinct persons form a unity and consider as the soul of the Holy Catholic Church. In regards with the term communion of saints, it tells us that the unity of believers who form one body in Christ is both represented and brought about. This is because in this communion, they always hear us out through our prayers. With them all together, it form one holy Catholic Church. In my own thoughts, Article 9 convinces us the Holy Spirit will make human beings members of the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit gathers all of us in the Holy Catholic Church in order to communicate with God through the sacraments to form one body in Christ. With this, we may participate in the eternal life. To simply put, if we believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, we also believe in the Holy Trinity. Thus, our souls would be sealed for eternity. The next article is all about the forgiveness of sins. We need to be forgiven by God in order to be saved. God taught us to have mercy and always forgive the sins of others because no man is perfect. Only God is perfect. We all make mistakes and as we humble ourselves and extend forgiveness to others, God opens the way for us to seek forgiveness for our own mistakes and sins. God fully forgives all that come to Him with a humble and unconditional forgiveness. Of course, forgiving is not easy to do, but hating someone or holding grudges causes many negative effects. The person who allows such attitude in their lives becomes joyless. Not forgiving can cause bitterness that claims us from the inside out. So, the best act to attain peace of mind is to forgive others. Mistakes and always try to understand that no one is perfect. We can apply this in real life by accepting that no one is perfect and understanding other people's sides so you can accept their mistakes and also your own mistakes and in the end, we can all forgive each other. The last article we'll be exploring is Article 12, The Life Everlasting, Amen. Eternal life is a promise from God to His people who believe and have faith in Him. What God means about His promise is all about living peacefully together with Him forever. Amen is the word we use for ending every prayer. It means that we are praising God and glorifying Him for His greatness and love for us. Trusting and having faith in God is a big importance. God always leads us the way. He always wants the best for us and wants us to be part of Him again through His promise of giving an everlasting life. For me, that is giving me peace of mind and courage that God will always be there for us even beyond that. We can apply this in real life by continuing on having faith in God. Having faith in God is one way to achieve peace and knowing that there is a place for us, even beyond that, to live forever. Now that we understand the Apostles' Creed, what can we gain from this? Considering the generations of past, belief and cultural changes have undeniably given rise to spiritual confusion. Apostles' Creed provide us answers that would definitely pique our curiosity regarding the history and summary of the Christian faith. Apostles' Creed teaches us that everyone across all ages and in many different places belong in this church ever since the beginning of time. To simply put, church is universal and we are truly welcome. Uh, for me, the benefit of understanding the Apostles' Creed is um, Basically, it means uh, for us to be reminded of uh, what God has done for us and uh, of course um, for, uh, what are His sacrifices for us and um, for us to be faithful and for us to trust Him. As we continuously recite Apostles' Creed, we are actually enlightening ourselves as it clarifies the central truth of Christian faith and Jesus Christ's revelations. Conclusively, Apostles' Creed emphasizes the authenticity and truth of our Christianity, which would certainly impact the lives of the believers. 
Apostles' Creed tells us if we constantly believe in Jesus Christ, our sins will definitely be forgiven. The summary of his life, death, resurrection, and ascension are all stated, which tells all of us that we really should believe in him. So, to summarize everything we learned up to this point, the Apostles' Creed teaches about God, Jesus, and the Church. The Apostles' Creed is a statement of beliefs. It contains the main Christian teachings and is often recited in church service. The Apostles' Creed is a summary of timeless biblical truths provide us with the essence of the Christian belief throughout history as followers attempted to construct a worldview and theology based upon the teachings of the Bible. The Apostles' Creed is the most historic and universal summary of the Christian faith in the entire history of the Church.